Time has come to rebuild the five cylinder that came out of my truck. No, it's not going back into my truck. It's actually going into my buddy's H3T. Now recently he suffered from the same issue that mine did and that's a rod knock. I'm going to wager that this truck has the exact same problem that my motor did. So in this video we're going to show you guys why these motors fail and how you might be able to prevent against it. What's up guys, Kevin with Badland Industries. I make custom parts for your Chevy Colorado, GMC Canyon, and H3 Hummer. Here on YouTube, I make videos to show you guys how to fix and fix up your trucks. If that's something you're into, please consider subscribing. And if you guys have any ideas for any products or video topics, comment below. So I've personally spun bearings on two separate five-cylinder motors, this one being the second. So you could say I'm kind of an expert on the subject. So the four and five cylinder motors we see in the Colorados and Canyons are part of the Atlas line of motors. GM made uh, these motors for the uh, Trailblazers, Colorados, H3s, uh, some Bravadas, some Oldsmobiles, some Saabs. So they're kind of around, but they're all kind of the same architecture and they don't all seem to have the same issue that the five cylinders do. So we typically see failures in the five cylinder motors more than the four and the six cylinders. So I noticed that the six cylinder straight six does not have the balance shafts like the four and five cylinder motors. But those can't quite be the cause of the failures because the four cylinder has balance shafts as well and it doesn't fail at the same rate that the fives do. The 4.2 has six cylinders and seems to be just as reliable as the four cylinder 2.8 and 2.9. So cylinder count can't be a cause so you might be asking what causes the failure in the five cylinders that we don't see in the four and six cylinders before we get to my hypothesis let's take a look at the block architecture and let me show you guys how the oiling system on this motor works so oil is sucked up from the oil pan through the pickup here and goes into the oil pump at the end of the crank comes out of the oil pump and into the filter housing and then it goes up through these passages up to the head. It also gets pumped through a passage all the way through the end of this block. This tube provides oil to all of the main bearings and to the balance shafts. So the residual oil gets pumped back here and lubricates the balance chains. Take note the 4.2 I6 does not have that balance chain. Oil pumps don't create pressure, they only create flow given the RPM that they're spinning. The pressure is created from the resistance of the oil system through the bearing tolerances and the different orifice sizes therein. This is the five cylinder crankshaft and you guys can see that the connecting rods get oil from the main bearings. Well, this fifth cylinder connecting rod here is literally the last bearing in the entire motor to get oil. And you wonder why it fails. The further away you go from the oil pump, the less oil flow you're going to see. The front main bearing is getting way more oil flow than the balance chain at the back of the motor. It is my opinion, professional or otherwise, that the failure point on the five cylinder motors is 100% an oil starvation issue. So in order to have the most fair comparison between the three motors, the four, five, and six cylinder, we have to rule out oil type and we have to rule out uh, oil change consistency. If those were factors, uh, the failure point would be a little bit more common between the three motors. We tend to see the five cylinder failures to be around the 100,000 mile mark. My first motor failed at about 120, and this one here failed at about 50,000 miles. But this is curious because we've actually seen multiple Colorado five cylinder motors with a half a million miles on them. So the failure point of the five cylinder motors seems to be most common the fifth cylinder connecting rod caused by oil starvation at high RPMs. Now it might let go at idle or cruising but I think the damage is being caused at high RPM. Now, rebuilding the motor by yourself can be a pretty daunting task and you need to know what you're doing and you need to know what tools you need and how it all goes together and all the specs. Uh, you're gonna need to take your crank to a machine shop to be welded and turned so that we can actually you know, have a usable crank. Now, I'm sure there's many of you that just don't have the time or the money or the know-how to do this yourselves. And I don't blame you. There's been people that have actually sold their vehicles because of this situation, and I would hate to have that happen to any one of you guys. So I think I've got the solution to help the oiling issue in the five-cylinder motors. This will also help for the four- and six-cylinder motors if you guys want, but specifically with the failures being the fives, this kit will absolutely 
make this motor 100% more reliable. Now, granted, if you guys run yourselves out of oil, I can't help you. So I'm working on a kit. It's kind of in the prototype phase right now. I'm not ready to show it to you guys yet, but uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably see some of it this next week. But you guys are going to have to tune into the next video to see what I've got worked out. And I think you guys are going to like it. But in the meantime, let's talk about some of the things you guys can do to improve the oiling system without modifying the engine whatsoever. You can convert to synthetic oil. They tend to resist the heat cycling a little bit better and tend to have a longer lifespan. The cost of a synthetic oil change over the life of the truck, say 150,000 miles, is only a few hundred dollars. So that really pales in comparison to a full motor replacement. Using a high mileage type oil can help. They've got additives in there that are specifically designed for older motors uh, with their bearing tolerances and, and seal shrinkages. They can actually help keep your motor running longer. And lastly, don't rely on the oil life indicator on the dash. That's literally the dumbest thing GM ever put on these trucks second to the brake design. In the comment section, let me know what kinds of oils you guys like to use. Do you like the mobile ones? Do you like the high mileage style? Are you just kind of the go to Walmart and whatever's on sale type of guy? Let me know. Um, I'm really curious to see what you guys are running as far as oil. Um, my 6 liter, I'm going to be very diligent on my oil changes and whatnot, so I'd rather not blow that up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and get that bell on so that you guys can know when I post the next video about this kit. And also, if you want to see the behind the scenes, go check us out on Instagram or Facebook and you might be the first ones to see what this kit looks like. Hopefully you guys learned something and you enjoyed. If so, please like the video and uh, share it on your favorite social medias. If you guys are in some of the Colorado Facebook groups or the Trailblazer, Bavada, is there even a Saab Facebook group? If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot of really cool stuff with my Colorado build and the other kind of videos that I'm doing. And I would really appreciate you guys subscribing. Thanks for watching.